Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Welcome, welcome to the Effect House live stream. We haven't seen you in almost two months. and No, not two months, two weeks, and we've been missing you dearly. As always, I'm joined by August, my co-host, who will be answering your office hour questions. Hi, hey. August. How are you guys doing? I see um, in the comments that we've already got some questions <clears throat> rolling in, so I'm very excited to get on those. But I just wanted to explain why we were out for the past couple weeks. Um, for the first week, so Effect House was at VidCon, and VidCon is like a conference in the U.S. where you get to um, where a lot of video creators or top creators come um, and connect and there's a lot of booth and you can uh, get learnings on how to be a good creator. So Effect House was also there because effect creators are also awesome creators. And we had some, um, we created some content, people got to visit the TikTok office. And that's why we were out. And for the second week, we, we had like a team summit event in my um, organization. So it was super fun. I got to meet the community managers, Effect House community managers from all over. So they all convened in LA. So if you guys follow us on our socials, you might have seen that we are there. So um, Victoria came from Brazil, Fran and Nanda came all the way from Europe. And Vanessa, came from I think Singapore or Australia she's traveling a lot so I'm uncertain but she will be here at, uh, <clears throat> later today to help with the office hours in a different time zone so we are very looking forward to um, hosting her then and you guys can connect to her there um, at the moment, August, I just wanted to ask, it was 4th of July in the U.S., which is the U.S. Independence Day, hence why I'm in this fun party outfit and this hat. <laughs> how, was your, how was your long weekend? Did you do anything fun? Oh, yeah, it was great. Uh, I went to Universal Studios. I wow. got a sunburn. I oh, no. Listened, I listened to a lot of fireworks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh it was great though yeah long weekend yeah so it was, it was nice super awesome reset. wait did you go to like universal universal <clears throat> like with the rides and stuff yeah yeah uh did the studio tour if you've ever wow. uh, went to universal uh -huh. studios the studio tour is probably the best part uh -huh. it's really fun. hearing all the facts and just like seeing all the sets from wow. all the famous movies is awesome what was your favorite movie set or like a drama <laughs> set uh, probably the Back to the Future clock tower. That is really cool. They, they did modify it a bit for another show, but uh -huh. the whole clock part and everything is still there. Wow, that's incredible. Like, <laughs> do they allow you to stand and take photos or is it like in a bus thing where it like drives by all the sets? Yeah, they like stop the train in front of it so you can take photos. And then there's a couple other parts where it's like you're in front of the motel from Psycho and like the guy oh, yeah. is like loading a body into the trunk and he chases uh -huh. the train. I think I've yeah. definitely been there, but I've been there so long ago that I don't remember. I think at one part there's Jaws, like the shark. Yeah. Okay, okay. But I, I definitely want to go back again. I can't believe you went there. Was there a lot of people? Yeah, it was a super crowded day. It was the day before 4th of July. So yeah. Uh, I actually have a season pass, but I had to pay for a ticket anyway because it's a blackout date. Oh, because it's like that popular of a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yesterday night in all of LA, you could just see that um, there was fireworks everywhere. So I, me and my friends were driving to go see fireworks, and we were trying to go to Marina del Rey um, because apparently they have gigantic fireworks there. But um, apparently they closed off all of the roads, so we couldn't even get there. So we were just driving on the road. But every direction we turned, like we would change our car to get over, and then there would be fireworks. So we're like, oh, this is great. It's kind of fun driving around and seeing all the fireworks. So, did you see any fireworks? Yeah, yeah. I just walked out to the beach and you could see them pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's so close to the beach. It must have been amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Brett says, listening to at August, listening to the fireworks is the second best way to experience them. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, you're so humorous every day. Um, 
Okay, let's get on with the questions. As you see, with 2.6.0, we have on, um, published quite a lot of new features, including a couple AI templates that I absolutely adore. Um, so let me transition here. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. I'm just screwing around with some material graph stuff. <laughs> just seeing what comes out of this. <clears throat> well, not really. I don't know what happened. I just kept clicking and then I just connected all the ones to try to make a face out of these boxes. No. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, I'm just doing some, just some math. Sometimes I get curious at like what would happen if I do this math? What, what would it visually look like if I manipulate the the UV points of a texture before I sample it to do like weird stuff. And like, this is an example of like, I'm just using some sine waves with time and I'm just like uh, multiplying them in different ways and offsetting them a bit. And then I want them to repeat instead of have that like glitchy edge mode. So I, I always mod it so that it stays within the zero to one. Uh, this is a great way to keep things within a zero to one range and do whatever math you want to them. <clears throat> and then I just put the X and Y back into the sample texture and I sample the camera. So like this is just one example. I think you could I think you could experiment all day and come up with all kinds of crazy looking things. And then maybe even some of them could be a whole effect by themselves. But yeah, just multiplying and adding and sine cosine waves, just seeing what I could what math I could do and how it appears once it goes all the way through to a texture sample. That's fantastic. Could you also um, give a sneak peek and show us um, some of the new AI AI templates? Oh, sure. Let's uh, let's see if we can. Oh, yeah, you can't open templates from here. Uh, let's go to home. That's where it is. I'll discard this. Um, so we have Art Maker. Um, this is a template that we're. I think it's live, um, right? Yeah, this. I think it was. It's uh, went up last week, or yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, because it's in the tool, it's visible to me. But uh, let's see. So basically, we have a very few things here, um, but we've got some things that show up, like a loading bar over here and this stuff is controlled by visual scripting if you look into it but then there's this mysterious um art maker try me and the this object is using this mysterious ai draw component so this is not available anywhere else in effect house it's uh it's kind of like a hard coded static object in this template so if you want to make an ai effect you're going to have to open this specific template um, and we're, we're just kind of testing this out, um, as a way to make AI, uh, full screen, uh, AI effects as like the whole thing, the, the whole effect. But if you want to capture it into a render texture and do something, uh, more complex with it, maybe you could capture it and put it like as the image of a Pokemon card or something like that trading card. Uh, there's a lot of ideas you could have, I think. I think, you know, millions of people will be much more creative than I will <laughs> just explaining this. But just trust me, there's a lot of crazy ideas you could come up with. Uh, you can see in the text prompt, uh, it's just kind of a lot of comma separated phrases or words. And um, if you look up prompt engineering, AI prompt engineering, that's like the, the phrase that that defines this kind of skill. And it is a big skill and it is really important. And I think just understanding how to how to feed in a text prompt to AI will probably become like a big thing if it isn't already, it'll, it'll get bigger and bigger. So this is a great fun way to like practice that skill. Uh, even if you don't like the effect that you end up coming up with, just try it a lot. You'll, you'll get really good at it really fast. Like, uh, I made a couple effects that are 
sh uh, should be coming out soon. Just by playing with these, I made some really cool stuff. Um, and then, of course, you can try the different models. Now, your text prompt will be basically sent to one of these models. And you might recognize these as effects that have been released by TikTok ourselves, just like internally. Um, and one is the classic anime. One is the retro anime. One is this fantasy kind of like uh, vampire looking uh, uh, model. And so basically, whichever one you choose will be like the style. And you'll be using that trained model with this text prompt. Now, this is the uh, slider that basically says if, if you put it all the way to 0 0.01, it'll basically just show you back the same screen capture that it just took. It'll basically just show exactly what the camera feed is uh, with a little bit of a hint of like prompt uh, AI generation. If you move it all the way to the 0 0.4, that's like the maximum setting of text prompt. Um, that will still look like the scene from the camera, uh, and it'll it'll add in a lot of your your phrases and words to redesign the whole look of it. I'll show you a demo here real quick, um, but <clears throat> but you can imagine if there were, if it went all the way up to 1.0, for instance, then it might completely disregard the input image or the camera feed, and it'll just create a a brand new image with no image input just based on your prompt. So like that, this slider bar is just like, do you want the camera feed more or the text prompt that you're typing in? So just keep that in mind. Uh, it works really well at 0 0.4, just maxed out. Um, and then these two fields are totally different. Uh, these are so that you can test your prompt without having to go back into Effect House. You can stay in this uh, generate artwork window and generate more images. So if I choose just something, <clears throat> just a random image, it doesn't have to be anything. If there's not a person in it, you'll get a lot more abstract um, things. Like if I if I just said like uh, gnomes for some reason, and then I gave it this, it'll probably paint some gnomes into the picture because it can't see a person. So like the default here, I think I wrote this one. It's just a spacey to go with the space theme of the templates and then making sure that it works with cats and dogs. I just added cats and dogs to the prompt and then it starts recognizing that they are cats and dogs instead of just these other other objects. Just little things like that. Um, I just wanted to clarify play. one thing because this was something that I was confused about mm -hmm. when I was first trying out this template. It says um, text image, but um, I know that some models usually take in the user's image and use that to train the model. Unfortunately, at the moment, that is not the case. So this will just show you what the text prompt will create. So um, if you just wanted to make sure that it works on different skin tones or in different settings, you can put in like a variety of images to show to kind of visualize what it would look like. So you can test out your effects in a different environment. That's what it's for. But I, I'm very looking forward to the day where we can um, upload our own images for training. Yeah, go back with your tutorial. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, like Celine said, the this test image and the preview count is just for creating your prompt and like testing it. Um, and then like, yeah, this has nothing to do with the final prompt. So when you click generate image, it just takes in this test image and it will show you what what would happen if this was the input thing, the, the, the camera feed. <clears throat> and as you can see, it, it thinks that this is like a, or it, it's dreaming. The computer is, it's basically AI is just like a server or a computer dreaming up an image. So that's how I like to think about it. So it's having a dream about basically the pink and yellow smoke is just this field with some trees. It sees this one puff of smoke as like an central focal object, it seems like. And then it's adding some little gnomes in there because I said little gnomes. And then, uh, you don't actually have to do this preview, but you do have to upload an image. Uh, but yeah, if you just upload an image and you're like, I don't care how it looks, this is my final effect, you can just click confirm. And then that is how your thing will be, your uh, AI draw will be set up. And then every time you- Oh, <laughs> nice. In, uh, some little gnome buddies on my head. 
<clears throat> and of course, the, the style is pretty heavily defined by the model that you choose, like I mentioned before. Um, so let me just show an example of if we open this back up, we just pick the same thing and then we switch to fantasy and we can pump this back up to four because I like it at the max settings. We'll see with the same exact prompt, if I just click generate image, we'll see how it totally changes how it looks. And maybe maybe also, this is basically the different models. It's like you're asking a different person to make their, their individual dream. So, so yeah, this one's dreaming up a much more uh, up close. The characters are much closer to the screen. It's like filling in the blanks in a much different way. Um, so with my face like this, I'll probably, who knows? Oh. Oh, not bad, not hey, bad at all. That's so cool. It even, I have like a slight mullet starting right now. <laughs> and it even, it's even pulling my little mullet. And, uh -huh. well, yeah, it's like this, uh, this guy is totally different from the gnomes. There's actually no gnomes in this. <laughs> so, Unfortunately, and that is sad news because <clears throat> I love the gnomes. Yeah, so what you would want to do if you see that, you just keep in mind like, some of these um, models will like take the text prompt a little more literally and some of them will maybe maybe it's making a guy that maybe this is this guy is a gnome maybe that's what it thinks gnomes look like but it's not like the subject where it's like a little guy in a red hat so you you have to be like more explicit with maybe the fantasy one maybe maybe that's a thing yeah but just play around with the different models and you'll you'll kind of see how they react over time to some different things uh, and you'll get really good at like, it's basically learning how to talk to the, to the different models. <clears throat> um, yeah. Is there anything else we want to, do you want me to try a different prompt with this one and see if we can get it more know me? <laughs> I think we are good at the moment, but, um, for inspiration, I created a mermaid effect. I also created a vampire effect. I just played with this, um, template for hours and it was so fun. So, um, and you can do, uh, you can define the styles as well. You can say cartoon or painting. So just go wild with this template. And when you make so, please share it with us on the effect showcase discord page, because I definitely you want to see like what you create is there any way to change the progress animation in this template uh, august yeah how about we take a look at that um <clears throat> so the progress animation is just this uh animated texture as you can see right here on this object and uh if you want to change it to anything else you can upload your own um png sequence and just make sure that it uh, lasts five seconds because the AI art maker component and tool that's built in what is hard coded to wait for five seconds and then give back a response. Um, so uh, yeah, I would just make sure, adjust the FPS until it says duration five here. And then you can swap it out there in the progress bar animation and you can also make sure anywhere that it's referenced in here, just look for that progress bar and swap it out there as well. Um, there might be a few places where it's being turned. Um, yeah, like smoke poof animation here is being turned on and off, but there's a couple places where you'll see it, I think. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you might notice uh, this wait for frames here. Um, just keep in mind that we are we we start the process, we wait for five frames, and then we show the progress bar because uh, it needs that five frames somewhere in there to take a screenshot. Uh, so if you don't have this waiting for five frames, it'll it'll contain your animation, your texture sequence in the screenshot, and that will greatly affect how the image looks. Um, so yeah, just make sure that if uh, that you don't like mess with the visual scripting too much because like there's little things like that where it's like oh yeah that's why we're waiting five frames you might not know right away but otherwise you could uh it could impact the final result 
That's fantastic. Thanks for letting us know. And also, did you guys know that we have a new look to the Effect House Learning website? So if you go to effecthouse.tiktok.com slash learn, you can see that we have an entirely new website. Um, and it is amazing. It is much more beautiful, I feel like. And you can search for things a lot better. So if you haven't, please go take a look. And um, if you have some feedback for us, just send it in the <coughs> Discord chat and we'll be monitoring. But it looks really beautiful. I really suggest that you go take a look. And then moving on to the second question, this person wants to create a glitter hair effect. So they want to maybe use the bling effect only on hair segmentation. Do you think this is possible? Yeah, we actually have a template that does pretty much exactly that. So why don't we open that up? <clears throat> uh, I'll discard this because some, it doesn't like something about gnomes or the servers that really are busy. Who knows? Um, oh no, it's not stained glass. Uh, let's just discard, reopen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so hair, change hair color, I think this is the one. Um, if we open this one, it says intermediate, but really as long as you learn the trick, it's uh, pretty easy. <clears throat> So this one changes every time you blink. You definitely uh, can look in the visual scripting and basically remove any of the logic that you don't like, um, like the blinking one. And uh, just, just mostly delete all of the visual scripting. Uh, you don't need any of it. That's just to show you how to do some different things. So if we take a look at the gradient hair color effects, we can see that uh, as you move around, your hair will kind of change color. If you want this to change, you can do like a more complicated thing. But let's see. So, so this is using uh, hair segmentation. Uh, and the hair segmentation, if we go to that, is going to be taking in the camera textures, the cutout, and it's going to be set to inverse. So what this means is that when we have this on the screen in full screen, it's just painting over. It's it's painting my original face, my original neck, my original clothes, uh, background. It's just painting the original camera texture over everything except hair. So if we take that away, <clears throat> we can see that we just have this gradient color image here. Um, so what we might want to do, I think if you add bling directly to this uh, layer, it, <clears throat> it always has to render last because it's a post-processing effect. Post-processing means that after everything in the scene is rendered, it starts the post-processing phase, basically. So it'll it'll basically always do it last. Let's see if we can uh, make a post effect with bling. <clears throat> and as you see, it kind of appears down here. But if we move it up in the hierarchy, uh, we can add the hair segmentation back, and you'll see that it is now masked because we're redrawing the camera texture over everything except the hair again. Um, so that bling was there just like the gradient color image, and now we have sparkly hair. Uh, just from this, I can see we might want to make it more glittery. Actually, that's pretty good. I like that. Mm, OK, this one looks good. <laughs> uh, that is that and help? after ever since you got long hair and you've been swooping it down every time i see you i think of that tiktok video it's like tonight will be the night of all <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i'm talking about oh should i go back to my emo phase <laughs> did you know what did you know every morning before high school i used to take an iron. I used to take my parents' ironing board and iron my hair because I didn't have a straightener. No, you're joking. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I had the straightest hair in the whole school. I can bet. And I'm surprised that your <laughs> hair didn't all fall off. Oh, that was my Caillou phase. 
<laughs> you should right totally make an effect place. where it's like an ironing board and then it goes through your hair and then you just get like a straight vertical line. It's like this. <laughs> <clears throat> an effect game with the scoreboard to count how many hairs you straighten. Oh my gosh. Um, we have a question from the chat. Oh, Bruno says, one more sticker for the collection. Every week, a character from August. <laughs> Hello, Perfect. Haley Kapaz. We're so <laughs> glad you're here. Um, Haley Kapaz asks, been wondering this question. Why don't materials and material editor update in real time? Um, interesting question. Why don't they update in real time? Um, do you mean, here, here's a material. Uh, let's just throw a plane up so we can render it. Oh, Haley so Kappa our... says, oops, meant to say values updating real time in the material editor, not materials. Oh, okay. That is a that is a great question. Um, I can explain that. So let's take a look at, um, here, here's the one that's gonna make it the most obvious, screen coordinate. <clears throat> so if we put this in add, so we can see the values, just basically doing a peak node so we can see the values. Uh, it says zero, zero. And it's weird to, let, let, me, let me think this through real quick. So we want to, how to explain it? Uh, okay, so the best way to understand this is to understand what you're really making. You're essentially making a shader here. Um, I know the actual, this, this node is called shader but uh, you're kind of writing a shader here as well. This is part of it. And this screen coordinate, it can't, it, it's the coordinate on the screen. So it's an individual pixel. Um, so for every single pixel on the screen, you're drawing the, you're, you're outputting a color basically. That's what this color is. Uh, so, so this shader is just drawing that color on every pixel. So it's literally running this code for every pixel. Um, and so when you're doing that, you're looking, you're peeking at the value for screen cord. Um, it's weird because you can't show every single pixel value. You can only show one here, right? So there's not really a way to tell you what is the value every single time it runs since it's running thousands of times. Uh, each frame. So then a what you have to do if you want to debug, um, and this is a thing across all shaders, some programs will occasionally have some, some nice little debug abilities, but since you're running the same code millions of times, it's like, it is a problem. Uh, one thing that I like to do is um, combine, <clears throat> I like to no, not combine. That's the visual scripting one. Um, append for. This is basically like combine, except it's like hard coded to take in four values and output a vec4. You can put this vec4 into the color now. I think in the first version you couldn't, but now you can. Um, so split. Uh, so you can kind of do a thing. Okay, wait, screen cord. Let's do uh, X and Y. We'll keep this at one. Wait. Oh yeah, the plane is rendering with the default material still. So I put my empty material in and you'll see, um, this is an interesting little demo. Let's see, R, G, B. So it's going from red to green. And in the top right corner, the uh, or the top left corner, I think it's going to be zero zero. So it's going to basically be black. And the bottom right corner down here, it's going to be white because it'll be, or it'll just be whatever a full red and green is. Uh, let's just spread it out full screen so we can see. Notice that these values that from the screen cord are actually the coordinates of the screen and it doesn't care where the plane is. So if we move this plane around, um, you'll see it kind of changes colors because the screen coordinates are changing even if the point on the actual plane is not changing. 
So then we can scale it up. <clears throat> and you can see, like I said, in the very top left, it's black because that's where the X coordinate is zero and the Y coordinate is zero. And we can see we put in zero for Z. So we're gonna get zero, zero, zero at that point on the screen. Um, and then as you go further, I guess, I should maybe know this, but uh, if it's uh, one red and one green, it's going to blend together to be yellow um, if the blue value is zero. So little things like this you can kind of use to debug. You can get really creative with it. I'll sometimes make um, an if statement. So, and I'll, and I'll program in like, uh, you can use constant color, you can use append for, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but for to make it quick, sometimes I'll just do this. And then I'll, if I have an answer, I'm like, okay, I have data. I'll just plug it into all three of these <laughs> as like that. And then I'll say like, okay. And then we'll just check if it's, if this value is greater than one. And this is like a debugging thing. This is just a random workaround. So you would, if you want to check if a value is greater than one, you just plug it into all four of these and then you can pair it A to B. And then you'll see if A is larger than B, it'll output this color. And you just, uh, you can just do this thing where you, where you uh, plug one of these into each of these and you output the color here. And you can see it's giving a black value. So <clears throat> whichever one of these, so A is less than B in this scenario is what it's telling me because this one is zero, zero, zero. So it's giving me that black value. If you want a very obvious color that shows it's not like glitching or something's not broken, you can kind of do this where you get an R, a G, or a B. This one is B, blue. So we can see that that is the, that's this color. This is just RGB values. So we can see that this one is no R, no G, just B. And that's what's showing on the screen. <clears throat> so this is kind of a way I've used to debug, but you know, this, this material graph is very new to me. I've written shaders in all kinds of programs and I've writ written like GLSL, AUSL. Uh, I've done shaders in Unity and each platform has kind of their own little workarounds and ways to kind of like take a peek into this thousands of uh, programs running per second. Uh, and this is just one of them. I hope, I hope if you get into a jam that this kind of thinking can help you find a way to, to debug. Yeah. Did that answer the question? I hope that wasn't too roundabout. Uh, Haley, Celine. if you have any more questions or you need further explanations, please let us know and we'll be happy to cover it. In the meantime, August, you have um, time to answer one question. I think it's really fun. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So this person has created a art maker um, uh, effect that applies the art maker to the hair only. So they're using hair segmentation on a plane above the art maker. And so far they say everything is great, but because art maker is a snapshot, kind of like once you created it, it's a photo, um, they added face tracking like zoom on the face, but the art maker isn't moving, nor the 2D scene where the they place the art maker. So they're wondering if there's anything that they can do to move the art maker to with the movement of the face. Um, you could take a snapshot of the screen. <clears throat> um, yeah, let me just create a new project to, or yeah, there's too much stuff in here. Um, okay, so if you want to take a, a snapshot of the full screen, um, <clears throat> you can add it into the visual scripting. Oh, why don't I just do it with Artmaker? Maker? <clears throat> 
<clears throat> so I haven't tried this before, but we can see if it works. So we want to go to this section. This is after we can see on play end. So this is after the uh, smoke transition, the poof, smoke poof ends. We could do some other stuff down here, like a snapshot. And let's see, I think, I personally think we would take it from this camera. Um, so the, the thing is, since this is a unique thing, this AI draw component, it's like, it's a little different. You can't really uh, see what it's drawing on. You can't see like a 3D plane or a 2D image connected to it. It's just kind of doing some stuff in the background. But we can assume that there's some sort of 2D or 3D image that it's creating. And because we see that the art maker, the camera that art maker is using is a regular camera, perspective camera, not orthographic, we can probably assume that that's gonna be a plane, um, a 3D plane. So <clears throat> that 3D plane will probably be rendered by this camera into its final render output here. Um, and so we can try to capture that texture uh, and plug it in to the snapshot node. And then after this smoke poof is disabled and the whole animation is gone, we will be able to uh, snapshot this <clears throat> and we'll snapshot it into, let's make a new 2D image. Screen image. Uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want with this. I, you can change the stretch mode to stretch. Sometimes I like to do that, it just feels better. Not important, not super important though. <clears throat> but uh, we'll want to grab I love this. combining Artmaker with other features like hair segmentation for this one. But I've also seen Hiroyuki um, just carve out, which is who is one of our Japanese ambassadors, just leave out an eye area and then use a photo of a cat. And then the Artmaker um, ch changes you into a cat. So you can see whether you look more like a cat or a wolf. And I just think it's such a smart use of Artmaker. And you guys should definitely, um, if you get bored, of just creating prompts, you can use other features that are already in Effect House to make like even more advanced AI projects. Yeah, you know? I really think I really think the important parts are going to be finding out how to how to use this feature in a unique way. Uh, I feel like all the easiest ideas will be taken pretty quick, and then uh, and then we'll see how creative people can get. Um, and it'll be, I'm sure there's going to be some crazy stuff. I can't wait. Um, <clears throat> but okay, so we got our set texture on this new screen image so that we can set the texture. This is how you use the snapshot node. You just, uh, it'll take it, uh, this snapshot texture and you want to put it on something. So now uh, whenever it's done, it should, oh, okay. So it didn't, um... <laughs> It didn't do anything because this screen image is taking up the full screen, so it snapshotted itself. Um, so what one thing we should do is we should turn on the visibility of the screen image um, after we save the image. So here's our target. We want to turn the visibility on, and then we'll just plug this in. <clears throat> and what this is doing is uh, after it saves the image to our hidden screen image object, it will turn it on so we can see it. And now if we move this around, um, oh, I can't see it because it's turned off here. Then we'll, oh, hmm, that's a little. OK, I guess I can change it with the screen transform in the inspector, and we can see it move around. So you can see that it is captured. Um, so yeah, now we have it captured to a thing. We got me looking kind of weird. It looks like it doesn't know what to do with my mustache. Uh, but we won't focus on that. We'll focus on moving it. So now you can attach this screen image to a head tracker um, or whatever you want, and then move it around with the, the face, I guess. So face info. And then updates. This is like the 2D way to do a head tracker in case you didn't know. I'll just show you. 
set position. So it's like update every frame, it'll update it to the center position of the face. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, this doesn't work very well with full screen images because you can see the, oh. Oh, right, right, right. It's uh, it's using the normalized values. Well, across most, uh, <laughs> across most things, micro jams and templates included, you'll find this screen to pixel subgraph that I put in everything. I wrote it a long time ago because I knew I was going to do this all the time. Just converts that normalized zero to one value to a uh, screen space pixel value, and now you can see it follows the follows the head. I'm moving my head right now, in case you couldn't guess. Uh, and yeah, so now you put a hair mask over it. Nice little hair mask. Keep your hair fresh while you sleep, um, so that it stays beautiful. Let's see. Um, Okay, segmentation texture. Wow, we're, we're getting so many features. That's great, but also. <laughs> I know, I it's what... incredible how much um, new features we're able to pump out. People are all asking like, does the Effect House team even sleep? And I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, I sleep, yeah. It's great. And we'll put this in here on our second screen image and that will mask it. So our, this is the final end result. We'll see how it works. <laughs> well, okay. I uh, forgot to put the uh, texture in here. We're going to the big reveal. Dang. Okay. Big reveal number two is going to be much bigger and better. Nice. <laughs> this one isn't really a hair one. Whoa, you can see the space, this looks the space nice. There. Yeah. Maybe if you That's... do more abstract themes like ocean or stars or like um, auroras, then you'll get an interesting background. That's awesome. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Haley Kappa says, would there be a way to use Artmaker to generate face masks in real time? I've tried it with render layers and stretching it a bit, but the 3D face doesn't look realistic. Hmm. Not that I know of yet, but as you know, everything, all of our features, they come out. Uh, we take in a lot of community feedback. So make sure if there's something that you, some direction that you want this to go to make some of your awesome ideas, just make sure to give a lot of feedback in the Discord. And, um, and I think that'll have a big impact on the directions that our features go. Definitely. Also, Haley, I can't tell you what's coming next, but there's a lot of interesting features coming soon. I honestly feel like people aren't sleeping because I don't know how we can create at such capacity, but there's a lot of interesting things coming your way. So you guys can all be super excited. Also, um, Bruno says, hey, August, a simple question. I have two animation sequences, but I can't keep both of them at the same duration or FPS. Is this some bug? I can open a topic on Discord after the session if needed. You can't keep them at the same duration or FPS? Or FPS, did you say? Uh, so if you change the FPS, there's a set number of frames. So it's going it's going to change the duration. So if I change this to 24 frames per second, it's going to be going through the set of frames much faster. So this will change to half of what it was since I doubled the FPS. Is that what you mean? Because like these, these values basically are doing the same thing. It's just a different way to read them. So it's like instead of uh, like how fast you're moving it's like how long will this last at that speed yeah 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 if you're still having trouble bruno we can help you um debug it in the discord channel as well bruno says yes the two animation sequences have 64 frames per second oh so you're you want two animation sequences to run uh, for the same amount of time basically yeah, I would say just make sure they're the same exact speed and they have the same exact number of frames. Because as, as you can see, this duration here, it's not super um, It's not super detailed. It only goes back one decimal point. So this could be like 
four point or two point four five or something. You never really you don't really know based on this unless you look at the number of frames and actually maybe do the math yourself. But that could be it. Maybe one of your animations has like one extra frame than the other or something like that, and they're getting out of sync. Because like at that speed, if they're running 64 frames per second, they're going to get out of sync really fast if they get out of sync at all. OK, sounds good. Thank you, everyone, um, for coming to the live today. As always, it was lovely seeing you guys. Um, I will be helping run the stream today, uh, later today. So if you had questions that weren't answered during this call, you can come at 530, which is in about six hours, I think. So see you guys soon. I hope you have a great rest of your day or a great rest of your night. And eha to those of you who live in USA. <laughs> <laughs> There's this viral TikTok going that's like um, USA. And it's just the sound of the bald eagle going, Ka! and that's just been like <laughs> on my mind nonstop. It's actually like <laughs> criminal how much the sound is playing. <laughs> and just everybody remember to use propane grills if you're making hot dogs yes definitely also um oh my gosh i have so much content to cram in this session but we have new generative effects and new dynamic generative effects so before when you would create dynamic effects like pout like it would always stay in this position but with this new dynamic um generative effects it's moving like it's actually animated so um it will make you do like a wink it will make you do some fun things we added a fur shader which is so funny i created a fur cowboy hat effect so if you want some crazy pattern for a cowboy hat try out my effect and also use the fur shader okay any last words august <clears throat> uh if you want to do the uh hair segmentation thing just take a screenshot of this <laughs> I just made it larger in One, case. Pose for the yeah. camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, I added this little rotation while you were talking earlier. So just in case anybody didn't see it, I took the rotation of the head and I added it to this image. So you can see the image now rotates in case you wanted it. Perfect. Back. It looks like you have a great red streak there. Maybe you can yeah, like, change the opacity and then it will look like super realistic. Yeah, maybe I'll get the red streak. Okay, we're going to let you guys go. Bye, everyone. Have a great rest of your day or night. Bye.